LES wants you to be prepared before the storm. Restock your emergency kit. Update your info with LES. And if you encounter an outage, report it at LES.com slash report. This is Lincoln's home for sports talk on the FM dial. Also online at theticketfm.com. On the internet. KNTK FM Firth, 93.7 The Ticket. NIPCO is hiring CDL drivers for ready-mixed concrete, Husker concrete, and Beatrice concrete. NEBCO offers great pay, medical and retirement benefits, paid time off, and they pay for CDL training. Apply today and start your new career with a $2,500 hiring bonus. From NEBCO's beginning in 1908, it's the employees that have formed the company's solid foundation. Start your career today. Visit NEBCOinc.com. That's N-E-B-C-O-I-N-C.com. Be a memory for your grandchildren. Among Nebraska adults age 65 or older, 47% report current alcohol use. Drinking too much can cause harm to children, family members, and loved ones. By drinking less, you will still be around for your grandchildren. If you or a loved one is looking for help, find a treatment facility near you at findtreatment.gov. For immediate support, call, text, or chat. 988. Brought to you by Nebraska DHHS in partnership with SAMHSA. Early break with Sip and Jake. I called. You didn't return the call. Uh, called yeah. a couple times yesterday. No, nothing. Uh, I, but I did trickets. Uh, hold it. I called Crickets. first. And then I got this. I don't know where Sip was. If you're in the bathroom, <laughs> I get the. He goes, the answer goes, hey, hang tight. I'm writing right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know. I'm like, well, why are you whispering to me? He said it just like that. Hey, uh, sit tight on that one. I'm, uh, I'm writing right now. And I'm like, what is he doing? Can you is he give in the us, bathroom or what? Where are you at? Can you give us the, the scoop where, of what happened? Yeah, there, where Sip? were you when I called you? Because I did call you back. Hang tight. Kind of Hang tight. I'm, I'm right. Early break with Sip and Jake from 6 to 8 every weekday morning on 93.7 The Ticket. Welcome into Fitness Fanatics on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Now here are your hosts, Jeff and Nicole Essig. All right, welcome into Fitness Fanatics. I am not Jeff. I'm Harrison Arns on the ones and twos. Jeff is out. He is at the, what's it called? The Blizzard Bowl for Tecmo? <laughs> Tundra Bowl. Tundra Bowl. Close. <laughs> Close enough. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jeff's out there playing some professional Tecmo Bowl up there. So it's just going to be <laughs> me and Nicole, and then we'll have a guest on the phone as well on the next segment. If you guys ever want to join in on the show, start a him in text line 402-464-5685. Streaming Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, Allo, Channel 961 as well. Great way to put a face to the voice, but nonetheless, it is not my show. It's Nicole's show. Awesome. Jeff's absent. So, Nicole, I'll <laughs> go ahead and let you take it away. Great. Before I forget, also, Fitness Fanatics is sponsored by Integrated Life Services. ILC is hiring direct support professionals all over the state of Nebraska. Full-time, part-time, days, evening, weekends. People can apply at ilc.net backslash careers. Direct support professionals work to ensure a meaningful life for the people they support. They work to support people in achieving their hopes and dreams. So as Jeff says, big shout out to ILC for sponsoring our show. So yeah, it's just me. Um, sadly, Jeff is no longer at the Tundra Bowl because he went 0-3 yesterday. <laughs> Wait, he went there and <laughs> lost right away. Yep, he lost oh, all tough. of his games. And so <laughs> he's actually in. So him and his buddy, neither of them moved on to the whatever next bracket or whatever it is i don't know and so they left last night um and then he stayed in iowa at his friend's house um and then he'll be driving home tonight so or this after this morning so he will get home a little bit sooner which is good but um so we had talked about him maybe calling in um he's not going to do that because he doesn't have any He's probably pretty sad about the whole weekend experience <laughs> going on yeah. three. Yeah, he's he went he lost right away to a newbie, someone oh. who was new to the tournament. So he just kind of started off on the wrong foot. I don't know. I didn't get all the details from him, but he wasn't real talkative about it. That's for sure. That's tough when you plan it all year long and just like you're really excited for it. Go <laughs> and three is a gut punch. So I know. Jeff, he, if you're listening, I'm sorry, that's brutal, but you know, it just means you gotta get back in the gym. <laughs> yep. He got to see some of his friends. He got to spend a lot of time with his buddy Matt, so that's good. But yeah, not the way he was hoping that the uh the weekend would go. So. Do you think this is gonna change his career no. on Tech Mobile? Or do you think no. he's gonna be back there next year? No uh, problem. I think he'll be back there next year. The funny thing is, like, remember last week we were talking about how there's like 70, usually like 70 players we yeah. kind of talked about. Yeah. 
Well, this year was kind of a historically low turn number. So as he was leaving, he was like, there's, I think there's only like 40 people signed up. So I have a really good chance. And oh, he like no. has not ever done worse in a, in a Tecmo tournament. So I don't know he, he how he could talk about it when he's back in two weeks because he won't be back next week either. But so, yeah, that was just kind of the quick update on Jeff and his uh, Tundra Bowl festivities. So I he might be he's going to stop and see his mom, too, before he headed back um, to not Nebraska. So he might still be there visiting with her. But if he's not, I'm also anxious to find out because I did ask him to pick me up a Green Bay hat, a Packers hat while he was up there. But then I didn't remind him. And so I'm a little curious to see if he remembered. So maybe we could. Uh, I'm going to guess no. I know. <laughs> Me too. Just, that's just my guess. <laughs> Nothing against Jeff. Great guy and all. But I I'm going to guess no. <laughs> no. So let's just. That'll be something to make sure you turn in next. Tune in next week. And I'll update everyone. <laughs> if he gets me one, I'll wear it for the show next week. And if not, then um, then we'll find out. So the good news is he's, you know, six hours away from Green Bay now. So he could probably stop somewhere and get me one if he forgot and he's listening. But. We'll see. It was kind of a, an experiment to see if he would remember. I yeah. I don't have a whole lot of high hopes. It was like maybe early is last week. Is he a forgetful week. person or is he pretty good with the it? the worst. Yes, extremely forgetful. He's the type, type of person that will go home. Like he'll be at the gym and he'll drive home to go do something real quick or mm -hmm. gra grab something. And then he'll do something else and then leave and forget and did not even do the thing that he went there for. So, yeah, he's notorious for forgetting things. So. If he did forget, I mean, it wasn't that big of a deal to me. Otherwise, I would have reminded him, but it was kind of a test. I wanted just to be see. funny. See out what of he curiosity. Yeah. yeah. Tune in next week. We'll find out if Jeff I was able to take about care it. of it. But yeah. I will say the weather's been beautiful. What is that? Do you, could, do you like what's your spring activities? I was talking to Pete Bergson. He's cleaning out the garage. Um, in yeah. the process, found a mini putter. <laughs> golf setup and uh <laughs> nice. that took a few hours away from the process <laughs> as know. most people you can imagine pete for can get distracted yeah. by some mini golf but nonetheless yes. what does that look like for you what are your spring activities it's tricky because my allergies are so bad during this time of year so it's Amen. hard to be outside <laughs> i know it's not that enjoyable um it's so nice but our air quality has been terrible so i go outside and i try i've been still running inside i haven't really done a lot of outdoor runs because it just kills me. Like my throat hurts afterwards. And so I'm just not a fan of spring. Why is the air quality bad right now? I don't know. Fires somewhere. I think there were some fires down in Kansas or I don't know. I just remember seeing it. Hmm. You could really tell the last couple of days, like it was almost smoky in the air. I don't know if yeah, you I guess I'm just that. bad at picking that up. I was yeah. just thinking overcast. Right. Is <laughs> yeah. that was going on during yeah. the eclipse? No, Why it was so I think it was before after? that. I okay. mean, it was after that. I think it was after that. But when I'm out at the Yankee Ridge gym, because we have two Farrell's locations and one is on 40th and Yankee Hill. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, because you live out by there. But, yep. I mean, what is the deal with that area? Because it is like the windiest place in the state. Like it is always so windy out there. Yeah. Well, we're on the south side and especially if the wind's coming. Well, it doesn't make sense because it's usually been coming from the north it, most of the time. So when I, I park on like one side of the gym and when I walk in, so I have to walk, I don't know, north and south. So I don't know. I don't I could think about it, but I don't know. So I'm walking like one way in the in the morning. And I've told people that if there's a time that I'm ever gonna snap about something, it's gonna be about this. When I, I pull up and I get turn off my car and I can already hear the wind howling out yeah. there. So I'm like, God, oh. and it's like 3 50 in the morning. I open my car door and I get out and I'm like, even when it's nice out, it's annoying. So I'm walking along the side of the building and into the wind. It's like I'm trying to carry 15 things to come inside and the wind is blowing. And then I turn around the corner to the to go the other way. And it's still blowing in my face. Like, how does that happen? Oh, well, you get to 40. I just find those alleyways. Like, what about is you more the wind or the cold? The wind. I, I'm, 100%. The, I'm the same way. Yeah. Like I, uh, I was getting pulling some stuff out of my car and the wind. Imagine being incredibly strong, yes. whipped the door on me, like smashed up my legs into yes. the car. And I just had some unchoice words for right. Mother Nature. Like, no. I can't stand the wind. It's me incredibly either. frustrating. Does that stop me you from either. like running? I will say, wind, yes. I'm a baby about that. Like, I got to suck it up. Yeah. Or at least just run in the direction with the wind, but I can't stand it. No, I, I, I don't mind running on the treadmill. Um, so, and I am in the middle of doing a run streak where I've been running at least one mile, but usually more a day since 
January 1st. Um, but the majority of my running will happen on the treadmill until this wind gets it back together because <laughs> I just cannot handle it. It's so annoying and exhausting. And it's like that we've talked, I've talked about this before too, when you're running and sometimes you don't even realize how windy it is and you're running and you're like, this is the greatest run ever. And then you turn around to go yep. back. <laughs> you were like, where did this wind come from? I did not even know it was, you know, and you're just, it's exhausting. So okay. I hate the wind, but I do enjoy being able to look out. Look, it looks beautiful outside. Look, I like looking out the window at the studio and the trees mm -hmm. are budding. I noticed our little lilac bush is uh, blooming in our front yard. I enjoy having the windows open, although we did turn the air conditioner on yesterday. I <laughs> yeah. didn't. What? How hot did it get before you decided? I, I got, Not very. I got to like 75 degrees and I was no. like, you know, I probably <laughs> need to turn it on here. It was like 70, but I knew it was just only going to get hotter. And yep. my daughter was complaining too. And I'm like, you're right. We're turning it on. So I just turned it on to 69. So it's like not like freezing cold. But so I am right now. The air conditioner's on and our windows are open because I still want some of that fresh air. Mm -hmm. And I think with our allergies, you do kind of have to like there's an exposure therapy. Yeah, you got to embrace yeah, it. Yeah, you got to kind of expose yourself to it. So I'm trying to do it in little increments. But um, so another thing I wanted to talk about, um, not speaking of, but speaking of throwing Jeff under the bus, because that's what we love to do so much. <laughs> Well, when you're gone, it's the same. No, I'm just kidding. I know. He says, he says nice words. <laughs> no, when I'm gone, all you guys talk about is sports. So well, we get yelled sorry. at it when you're in, here in person. So. <laughs> I know. so no. So this is one of this. I have a theory because when Jeff uh, leaves, if he drives, he always takes my car because my car's nicer. Better gas mileage. Yeah, probably. way better gas mileage. My car's newer. His car is like a 2011 Toyota Corolla. So it's going to live forever. But mm -hmm. it's just, you know, an older car. Just doesn't want to risk it. My car has brand new tires. Like you said, gets better gas mileage, all this stuff. So whenever he drives anywhere out of town, he always takes my car. So then I have to drive his car. And I swear he neglects his car on purpose because he knows that once I have to drive it, I will fix the things that he's been neglecting. What is, what's being neglected? So the last time he went out of town, I can't remember where he went. Like, is it just like a flat me. tire when you hop in the car? No, the no, normally the he does normally have the uh, the uh, low air okay. pressure is almost light, is almost always on. He did put air in his tires before <laughs> this time. But the last time he had a headlight out. So Jeff, he just drives around. Over I, know, I know. He <laughs> just drives around at three o'clock in the morning with no headlight. That's when we drive in the darkness. We don't really drive in nighttime darkness very often. Last time I got pulled over yeah, was for that. I know. Luckily, the cop was nice and he was like, yeah, just get it fixed and you'll right. be good. And it's not got that it done hard the next day. Yeah, to do. Two seconds. Right. Don't I know. be that person, Jeff. <laughs> oh, he's so that person. He drove around for months and i'm like if it costs I get, like five dollars for I a ball no <laughs> and all you have to do is look it up on youtube and to figure out how to do it for your model of car so if anyone just just do it but very easy so i fixed that the last time he had my car this time is so much worse because if anybody remembers and you probably don't even though it's still a big part of my life um i have a thing about expired license plates registration oh, plates. Yeah, yeah. yeah right <laughs> i see them all the time i see them everywhere and um so he does not did not have an expired tag so his tag was up in august of last year but our kids got new cars in like june so he actually renewed his registration early and then never put the new license plates on they just were in his car for months and months. In fact, he even got pulled over one time. Still didn't change the license plate. <laughs> it gets worse. <laughs> so then finally, I was like, enough is enough. We're going to do this. So we changed the front one. And I, oh, be, also we did this because his taillight went out. <laughs> and <laughs> so like you can't have a taillight out and a expired I don't know. I'm putting a car with the muff muffler dragging on the ground at this point, the way you're describing it. It's not, you, you would not be far off. It does have <laughs> um, a side mirror that has duct tape on it. Well, it did, but it fell off. So now it's just barely hanging on. I'm not exaggerating. But so a couple months ago, his taillight went out. And so I helped him fix that. <laughs> I like how you, I said, I your taillight's out. And, and he goes, 
well, are, can you fix it for me? Is exactly what he said. And so I, it's one of the things I love about Jeff. He has no ego about stuff like that. So he knows how to stay in his lane. His lane is sports. Mm -hmm. So, um, so we did, and I was like, okay, well, while we're fixing this taillight, let's put your new license plates on since they're just been in your car yeah. for months and months and months. They've been pulled over once already. For and they pulled over <laughs> once. And um, because he still had the old license plate. So like, because you remember, we got new license plates yeah, last year. Yep. And so not only was it like the expired tag, but it was the old license plate. Like nothing screams expired registration. Like having that old license plate on your car with the county number <laughs> yes like nothing it's, it's easy to to pick you out and so we he i was doing the taillight and he did the front license um plate and then we go to the back and we could not get one of the screws loose on his back car Rusted like the out. back one yeah. yeah and it was bad like we just could not get it we tried we sprayed, sprayed WD-40 in there. We tried every tool that we had to get it. We could not get it. Jeff was like, oh, well, it's fine. And for months was driving with the right one on the front of his car and the old expired one on the back of his car. <laughs> months, months and months and months. And then... It's a unique one. If you're a cop, you could pull them over. It's like, well, you're technically legal, but he you're was. illegal on the back. So I'm not sure what to do about this. <laughs> so then even a couple weeks ago, he went over to uh, our friend Curtis's house because Curtis has more tools. And so we thought maybe he has some type of high impact, something that he can get this loose. Mm -hmm. He goes over to his house. This was weeks ago still. Curtis couldn't get it off. They ended up having to like shear it off and then um, just drill new holes like in the yeah, bottom absolutely. so he could put, you know. But of course, Jeff didn't have his new license plate with him. So he still for weeks drove around. <laughs> <laughs> with the wrong license plate and then he found the license plate but couldn't find the sticker that went to it so anyway needless to say i have found the sticker and i replaced the license plate and now his car is legal again even though it was the whole time but i mean how embarrassing would that be to get pulled over for that <laughs> and he's had it since like june it's been if i was the cop i just have a lot of questions I know. <laughs> No. I just have a lot of questions. I'm like, yeah. okay, so you got pulled over. Yeah, I don't I mean fixed it, but you were halfway. Yeah. <laughs> be perplexed as to why. So I fixed it. Again, if Jeff's listening, good job. I fixed it. You're fine for the next, you know, four months or whatever till you have to get the new. Yeah, you wasted but a few months of sticker. legal driving. Right. <laughs> I know. But at least that'll be just replacing the sticker. Mm -hmm. Not but like he literally drove around with those license plates in his front seat, like. For months and months and months and months. I guess and at months. least he had them. Worst case, he did. To, like he could show them. Like, yeah, ah, I just got to get them on there. Yeah. But. And he, like I said, he got pulled over once, still didn't fix it. They just gave him a warning because he wasn't technically illegal. And it was right. only like two weeks after he got the new okay. plates. Like it was very soon or two, two, two weeks, like in September or whatever. Mm -hmm. But in the midst of that, I have one more thing to talk about. And this is related to fitness because, um, I also cleaned the inside of his windshield. Like that's a new, I've always feel like that's a new level of like adulthood unlocked when you have to clean. See, have you ever cleaned the inside of your windshield of your car? Uh, I have because it wasn't working properly and I was getting a bunch of moisture. Oh, this is yeah. an older car. So no, right. not for the right reasons. <laughs> but no. Yeah. <laughs> so I had to do this in my car a couple of weeks ago and I've been meaning to talk about this on the radio and we have about a good amount of time to talk about this, but, um, because it, my car was getting that way too. And honestly, I think it's because of the poor air quality that we have here. So when sometimes those filters go out in your air system or oh, whatever, yeah. like it, it, you kind of get, it gets a little grimy on the inside of your uh, windshield. Well, a couple months ago I was driving and when I would drive home in the morning, home from the gym, the, the light would shine just right into my windshield and I mean, for weeks, I was thinking there was something wrong with me. Like, I was thinking, are my eyes going bad? Is there something wrong with my eyes? Like, I was kind of worried about it. Should I go see an eye doctor? Am I having problems? Because it would be like in that the, right before the sun rises. So, like, it's kind of dark out. But then I, sometimes I couldn't see, like, 
I couldn't see the median okay. when I'm driving, you know, and you have those moments sometimes where you're just like, oh gosh, I hope this is where you're supposed to be. Yeah, I need to clean my yeah. headlights really bad when <laughs> you're talking because yeah. they are, it looks like I got my dimmers on sometimes because yeah. they're getting so dirty. But yeah, anyways. so there were a couple moments I'd be like, oh, this is kind of scary. This is dangerous. Maybe I should go to the doctor. And then finally I realized what it was and it was the it, inside of my windshield was kind of grimy and I just, you know, cleaned it and it solved all my problems. <laughs> and so Jeff's car was really bad too. I don't know how he's been driving around in this and he doesn't wear sunglasses either, which is also bizarre. I, I feel see, like I can see him just squinting yeah. away. Just like, it's <laughs> fine. He seems like a very, it's fine kind of guy. Like he's just going to get through it's anyways. It's fine. Literally should be on Jeff's headstone. The amount of times that he says it's fine. It drives me nuts. If I could take one state phrase out of his vocabulary vocabulary that would be the one because sell some ferals merch with that just head on there it's fine so true <laughs> he says it's so much i have really sensitive eyes to light so i always wear sunglasses but he doesn't so i don't know how he was seeing out of this but so i cleaned it and of course driving here i cleaned it in the car right before i came crystal clear it was a brand new experience driving but it made me think about and this is where we had to be philosophical for a second because this happens in the health and wellness uh, space too, where, and Harrison, I don't know if this happens for you because it maybe it does because, but you're a young man. So maybe it might be different, but Quarter like, of a century now. I know Crazy. happy birthday, by the way, belated, Thank but you. um, so it, as a woman, at least mm -hmm. I am constantly bombarded with like, what is wrong with me? There's this, these things might be wrong with you. How can you fix you? You know, especially like health -wise? yeah, like okay. hormonal stuff oh, like okay. that yeah, for yeah. women. And I'm sure there's something like that for guys. I don't know. I mean, testosterone is a good one. Do you need to take this testosterone? I think for guys, it's like blah, later blah, blah, in blah. life. We it don't is. worry. Like, I right. don't know many people my age really worrying about yeah. any of that. And stuff. I didn't either when I was 25. But so, you know, the health and wellness industry really makes you want to think there's something wrong with you because the long, the longer you can think something's wrong with you, the more that you're going to try to seek new things. And they're going to hope that you're going to seek their thing, whether it works or not. They you know they're like, oh, well, if we can get all these people on this bandwagon for this amount of time, whatever, we'll make Ozempic. money. Uh, yeah. Ozempic, <laughs> right. Stuff just, like that. Yeah. Stuff like that. But then once I cleaned that windshield, I just, I really realized that how many things in our lives with our health do we think is something wrong with us when in reality, it, all we really need to do is to change something about our environment? I'm glad you said that. I preach right. this stuff from the mountains all the yeah. time. And if my girlfriend's listening, you know, I always <laughs> right. tell her, like, you don't need an Advil every time you got a headache. <laughs> right. Like, whatever yeah. it is, like, if you just treat your body better, yes. especially like you start relying on those, you yeah. know, like where you can just grab them, you don't have to go to a doctor and just constantly taking medication. Like, right. that's great but it's just gonna be useless if you just yeah. use that stuff and then your body's gonna be unable to fight anything on its own it's true so if you think about like what's something's wrong with me but really you need to change your environment then you're not going to have to rely on all these fads and the next you know mm -hmm. but yeah advil is a good one i try not to take advil just because i do feel like it could be a slippery slope for yeah. me and like, i'm not telling people you know i'm not like anti obviously take your medicine no, no, if you need right. it but definitely like there's times <laughs> no. where if it's like find you the think root you cause can get through it like right. just tough it out yeah like, you, i think in the long run like drink some water maybe that's it what yeah. you eat that day do you eat a bunch of mcdonald's maybe that's why you don't right. feel very good that day yeah it's just like small stuff that if you really think back okay what did i do in the last 24 hours oh geez How didn't get I enough do? sleep yes. one cup of water yesterday and fast food for lunch. Okay, that's my problem. It's not that I have a hormonal imbalance, any of that right. stuff. Yep. So sometimes the first step people should take when it comes to wanting to change their health is identify the things that are in your environment that are kind of holding you back. So for me, that was a dirty windshield was making <laughs> me feel like my eyes were broken. There's something wrong with my eyes. And I could have gone to an eye doctor and they would be like, no, I think you're fine. And I still would have been seeking mm -hmm. something wrong with me. And, and all I needed to like, do. You actually do some new glasses probably. too if you want to pay for those. I know. You got here, so. Yeah. <laughs> so like all I needed to do was clean my windshield. So like, you know, when I always talk about if the one thing that you can do to make the biggest impact um, in your health or whatever, that is one that's important. What is the one thing about your environment that you can kind of change to improve your health? That could be keeping junk food out of your house, not buying, you know, thinking 
for some reason at the, at the grocery store, we think we're like going to be super motivated to be able to portion control the foods that we yeah. know we cannot. <laughs> like, yeah. We become different people in the I grocery can't get store. Oreos. I just, yeah, I me literally, either. if I have milk at home, me too. <laughs> I can't, if there's no milk, I can actually get the Oreos because I too. can have a few. But me yeah, too. That's, that's just one I'm like, don't buy it. Nope, don't buy it because I will just eat a whole sleeve of them. Mm -hmm. And then at some point, you're like, well, they're all going to be gone eventually. So I might as well just eat them all now. So I'll eat. So me too. Oreos is one. So that's the thing. Like maybe that's something to think about this week. Um, as you're listening to the show and what, what maybe you could change, what easily could you change about your environment? If you have a, if you go through drive through, uh, as a habit every day for something, go different way, change it, change your route, go mm -hmm. different way to work. So you aren't tempted and you're not like that lab rat, just like conditioned to go into the gas station or go in through the drive through or, you know, so something to think about. For this week but i've been meaning yeah. to talk about that for a while so yeah you got anything else before we go to break here no we have but our guest is coming up we do have a guest brandon right. miller uh from ferrell's martial arts is is on so one of our one of my longtime kind of mentors so we'll have him here on absolutely so this is fitness fanatics we'll have brandon miller on the next segment on the allo vip line where they understand the importance of exceptional service with a local heart so don't go anywhere uh we got just about two more hours of the show up ahead here we got nicole no jeff here not two hours. Yeah. You got the first 25, <laughs> excuse me, hour 45. <laughs> Jeff or Nicole gave me a nasty look right there. I didn't. It was this confused look. <laughs> but nonetheless, we will be back in just a moment. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Hi, this is State Senator Carolyn Bozin. As a state senator, wife, and mom, I believe Lincoln is a great place to work and raise a family. My husband, Reggie, and I are local family business owners and actively involved in our community. Last year, I voted for the largest property tax relief package in Nebraska history. Property tax relief is important to every family, and I will continue to deliver more property tax relief to working families. This is Carolyn Bozin, and I am asking for your vote on May 14th. Paid for by Bozin for Legislature. At Southeast Community College, community is our middle name. Our continuing education classes offer personal interest, traffic safety and licensing, online learning, and adult education classes across Southeast Nebraska or online in your own home. Learn to ride a motorcycle, how to start a small business, how to dance, or take a course to advance in your current career path. See the full schedule of continuing education classes online at southeast.edu slash continuing. SCC, your path to possible. Community means something different to everyone. But for me, it means cheering on those around you during the good times and helping them out during the tough times. I'm softball player Jordy Ball, and I've been blessed with the support of my friends, family, coaches, and community throughout my life. When looking for a bank to call home, it was easy to choose Midwest Bank. I never feel like just another customer, and they're proud to support their communities. They love what they do, and it shows. Your community, your bank, Midwest Bank. Houses? They're expensive. And once you buy one, you're kind of stuck with it for a while. You need to make sure you get your best house for the best price. You need Ben Bleicher and his team of pros at Professional Realty Group. They'll take the time to figure out what's important for you in your dream home, and they have the expertise to find the hidden issues that could surprise you after the sale. That's professional knowledge, proactive service. We call that potential. Ben Bleicher and the team at Professional Realty Group of Berkshire Hathaway's Home Service Ambassador. Find more online at prg-ne.com. Hello, this is Mary Pat Waite. I've had the privilege of working with Lincoln Families as their realtor for more than 31 years, and I'm so proud to be associated with MP Dodge Real Estate. For me, your transaction is unique in its own way. My experience allows me to bring you trusted care and a really great outcome. My NP Dodge family shares the same client focus. Expand your career with NP Dodge. Call Eric at 402-434-2222. Whether you're looking for a place to stay for a concert at PBA, a Nebraska home game, or just a night on the town, the Courtyard Lincoln Downtown Haymarket is the place for you. Enjoy an evening at one of many restaurants or bars within a short walking distance. Business travelers at the hotel will enjoy free high-speed internet access, a 24-hour business center, and large in-room workstations. And check out the Bistro, where you'll enjoy healthier food and beverage options, as well as high-tech conveniences. Book your room today at the Courtyard Lincoln Downtown Haymarket. Rico here with HIS Auto Care at 70th and Van Dorn, letting you know HIS is a great place to bring your vehicle for service. With superior service, bumper to bumper, we'll treat your vehicle like it's your mother's. Doesn't get any better than that. So call 
888-8934, and HIS Auto will make you glad you did. 5% off, mention this ad, and for sure, your mother be proud you called. 402-488-8934, HIS Auto Care, 70th and Van Doren. God bless you. Hey, it's Chad with the Nutrition Authority inviting you to stop in and check out the all-new complete post-workout recovery, CPR. CPR is ideal for anyone who works out or competes and wants to maximize results. CPR can only be found at Nutrition Authority. Stop in today and try a free sample or visit us at MyNutritionAuthority.com. Gaina Trucking is hiring CDL Class A and B drivers. Gaina Trucking guarantees a 40-hour work week year-round. And their strong team culture makes it not a job, but a career. Gaina Trucking offers health, vision, and dental insurance, 401k with company match, an employee assistance program, and other bonus programs. Build a better career today with great team culture at Gaina Trucking. Learn more and apply today at gainatrucking.com. Now back to Fitness Fanatics on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. All right, we are back. I had to say Jeff's tagline, so I, I was a little ca- uh, camera shy at the beginning of the show, so Harrison uh, picked up the slack for me, but I came back on this one. I think I did fine. That was a great first yeah. segment. I mean, let's be real here. The first segment between us three is usually just yeah. kind of banter back and forth anyway. So. I wasn't worried about the first segment. I was worried about the intro, because <laughs> Jeff always does that. It's yeah, so dumb. he uses the same line every time. Every time, so... <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, so Brandon, we are joined with by Brand Master Brandon Miller. Thanks for joining us today. How are you doing? I'm great. How about you guys? Good. Want to make sure we could hear you. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. So, Brandon, we've known each other. I don't know. We do the math. Decades. We've known each other almost. Probably uh, 18 years. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that's pretty wild. <laughs> no. <laughs> so let's uh, start by like you just kind of giving us a little bit of a of background about you. Like why, what are we going to learn from you today? Where, what's your story? So let's just, let's just start there. Yeah. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm 41 years old. I'm a dad of uh, two awesome kids married to my lovely wife. Uh, we're sitting here in my living room right now. Um, as they're out doing different things with friends and, uh, my wife took the dog for a run. So hopefully it'll be uh, good for the radio show for that part. Um, <laughs> but, uh, we're, a, we're a Christian family. We, we love uh, Jesus. And, uh, this is one of those things that we just also love sharing our story. Um, I'm mostly the spokesperson of, uh, of the family just because of the, the role that I'm in as a martial arts instructor, uh, fitness leader. Um, and one of the things that we love to do is figure out what's working well with our family and then share that with the other folks that are around us. We're big mm-hmm. believers in community and how we can uh, all come together to have an impact on the our not only our community but you know on the over our um, our city and our state and our nation and globally as well too because uh, we all get to do our part and work together to see that coming through. So um, the feral story that I have and kind of really around fitness is I grew up always doing some sports. You know, tried a couple of things, soccer and t-ball and all those things. But uh, when I was pretty young, my uncle Jamie. Uh, five, six years old, my uncle got me involved in the Farrell's martial arts program. And Master Farrell Lance had just started his first school here in the or the uh, Des Moines area underneath of a bowling alley, kind of on the north side of Des Moines. And, you know, you go there and, the bowling alley, right? Yeah. <laughs> it burned down a couple of years ago. So it did. That was, yep. a, that was a sad day. Yep. But, uh, you know, the, one of the things that we loved about the place is because it, you know, it's one of those that you, you just have fond memories of coming into your dojo as a, as a little kid and your the workout exercise space. And even there, they had the, the first room that you kind of walked into was this big matted area. And then you walked through a doorway and it was all fitness equipment. And so it was tons of machines and free weights and dumbbells and all this stuff. And then you walked in to another area after that. And it was actually like an aerobics type room, you know, just carpet on the floors, you know, pretty simple, but they ran some other different classes and stuff out of there. So I grew up going to that location. Um, they then opened a few other locations after that, Urbandale, Southside, uh, West Des Moines. And um, so I was a Southside kid, I grew up there, graduated from Lincoln in 2001. And so I would go to kind of whatever location was closest, but that North school and then what eventually transferred over to Beaverdale, um, those were kind of my hangouts. Those were my, my home schools and where I got to take a lot of the classes from Master Farrell and then obviously Master Todd Door as well too. Um, and then, yeah. Where was, where was the Southside location? 
So the South Side location was actually uh, funny. The South Side just location just moved yeah. a little while ago. There was we were kind of in that same strip mall that they were in, and then we were down on Army Post Road for a long time. So right by the Legends Bar and Grill, Albertsons was over there. Um, not <laughs> quite to the Southridge Mall, but um, okay. Yeah, that's so, funny because I, I grew up on the South Side too, but I don't remember seeing Farrell's Martial Martial Arts. Okay. On the south side. But I mean, that's one of those things. You're just kind of, you're not looking for it. I yes, I worked yeah. right next to, I worked in the chiropractic office right next to the West Des Moines location. So I was oh. definitely very familiar with that one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So kind of crazy. We probably ran into each other before we even knew each other then if you worked there because we were yeah. there for meetings and all the things. So yep, cool. probably. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I'd start, 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 sorry to derail you, but I was just kind of thinking, I don't remember seeing a martial arts on the <laughs> South side, but I also don't remember an Albertsons either. So maybe yeah. I just didn't go that far down. <laughs> I don't know. That yeah, was a long we, time ago. Yeah, it's been uh, kind of a whirlwind of those locations over the years and where you feel like you're somewhere for so long. Um, it really is just kind of that short clip at a time, too. So, mm -hmm. you know, we grew up doing that. Um, as I was in high school, I was teaching a little bit of Taekwondo class. Uh, my uncle worked for the business at that point. So they had a way to say, OK, this is the family business and then you can work a little bit for us before you're really 14 and da da da. And so uh, got a chance to teach a few classes while uh, they were leading some other ones and getting new people enrolled. Um, and then my uncle actually moved to Texas to work for Chuck Norris in his Kick Drugs Out of America program. Wow. And so, yeah, fun little fact. Just yeah, you know, so. slide um, that right in there. Yeah. And uh, of course, adjacent. <laughs> he moved uh, and we and then that caused us to close the south side location. So I started commuting across town to Beaverdale. Um, the North School there. Um, and that's where I really kind of started picking up some more classes and getting some more training uh, throughout my high school years. Earned my first black belt when I was 15. Um, that would be my first degree black belt and then a couple other black belts before I um, graduated high school. But um, yeah, I mean, after that, it was I was planning on going to school for music and going into college, um, trying to figure that out because my grades weren't stellar. And then uh, they made an offer to me and just said, hey, if you want to come teach for us for a year, we'll we'll honor keeping you on staff as long as you're working hard. If you want to um, and we'll pay for a year if you want to work for a year. And I was like, I get to wear my pajamas every day. Tell people what to do. I was like, this is awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm in. So um, and I think I said yes before any other details were discussed. But um, that's kind of how it all started for me. And that was in 2001. So I graduated and then already had an agreement that within a couple of weeks, I'd start working. Um, for the business. And then a couple months later, I traveled to Korea to do some training over there and experience the culture. Taekwondo is a Korean martial art. And so they had some friends over there that kind of served as a host school for me. Um, so I was there five weeks and then came back. And like the weekend I got back was uh, a couple of things happened. One, 9-11. And then two, we started the first body shaping program. The mm -hmm. very first uh, UBC back in the day, as it were, first 10 week session. So I still have. So I did. Fun fact, I did UBC in the Beaverdale location. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I still have my manual from that. That belongs <laughs> to the some. museum somewhere at this point. Right. So I, still, I just found it again in a drawer. Like two days a finishing T-shirt, like the white with the blue. Kind of, I don't even know what a guy. No. Why don't I have, uh, I don't have that anymore, but my, I did it in probably 2003. Okay. It had to have been, two, I think it was 2003 because it was after our, my daughter was born. So okay. I still have it. I still have the, the manual. I still have a bunch of sheets in there, my testing information. So yeah, okay. I definitely uh, remember going to that Beaverdale location and doing, doing UBC, which was what Farrell's was before it was. Yeah, Before look how far you've come. That's yeah. all. <laughs> so, yeah, so that started. And then so you were involved with that as well, right mm -hmm. from the beginning then. Yeah. So the very first session, um, I was one of the coaches, one of the strength training instructors. And I remember doing, if you remember, the Beaverdale location was in the old Masonic Temple. So we had yep. two classrooms on the top floor, um, a few flights of stairs, and then a base level where we had a lower uh, location. And so that lower room is where we did all the strength training bands classes at the time. Yep. And so I got done the first day, Monday was lower body at that time. And I, I know we did low were... weight. our schedule was flip flopped. I remember that too. Yeah. Well, we had, you had, um, I don't know about when you did it, but we had strength training and kickboxing every day. Oh no, we did not, but I'm pretty sure it was strength we training week. Monday, yeah. Wednesday, Friday. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. And so then we, I like pulled myself up the rail of the stairs to get to the top and I, <laughs> I could drive my clutch car home. <laughs> 
um, <laughs> to work that. So it was, awesome. a, it was an interesting, uh, interesting workout, but um, yeah, so we did that really successful, great results during that first uh, 10 week session. So then we just put it in the four locations that we currently had. So uh, West Des Moines and Waukee, and then also Urbandale and Beaverdale, we ran that the next 10 week session and then kind of kicked that off and it's grown and shifted and morphed and uh, evolved into what it is today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just telling um, our 10 weekers, I think it was last session. I don't think it was this session, but I was just telling them about how how cool it is to me that Farrell's, because I've been a, an active part of Farrell's for eight, 17 years. This mm -hmm. session actually um, is 17 years that I've been, that's when I started my 10 weeks at Farrell's um, that? Yeah. <laughs> after, yeah, I know after our son was born. So that's kind of when, but before that, when I did UBC with, with after our daughter was born, um, you know, the program has not, the, found the fundamentals of our program has not changed in that time. And that is in this industry, that's amazing that, you know, yeah, we've bro. made improvements to the program, especially strength training. Um, I think our strength training program is so round, you know, rounded now and everything, but for so long, it was always the same too, but I just don't think there's many fitness, uh, fitness programs that can say over the last almost 25 years that our fundamentals have stayed the exact same. I would assume you would agree with that too. Yeah, when I look at it, I think, um, and, and even going back before that, like the FXB program came from our martial arts program, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. there's a reason our martial arts program is still going because we depend on that community. But I always call them like those uh, unshakable truths, right? Or some people call them first principles or foundational pieces of your program where it's like, this is the main thing. Let's keep the main thing, the main thing. Like, cause if we're always, there's some time to shift and change and adjust. Um, but really when you look at it, if you go into a, a plan of a program or a business with, this is how I want to impact people's lives. If you've got a big mission around that, then that, I mean, you really can't fail as long as you're willing to, to shift and dig in deep and work on those things. And I think we were a little bit ahead, the, ahead of the curve as far as the group fitness goes. People at that time didn't see how you could do what we were doing. And even the UBC program, a lot of people don't know. We bought that at a conference we went to for martial arts. And really, it comes from the book Body for Life. Mm -hmm. Body for Life made into a group fitness program. And then from there, we just started adjusting and adding and, and moving ahead. And they weren't really changing anything. They just kind of kept selling the same program. But as we adjusted, I was like, we're doing more business. I was in charge of ordering those manuals that you got. I probably touched that very manual. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Gloves, wraps, bags, all the things. So I was in charge of inventory. And I knew when I called their Florida office and I said, hey, I need 50 manuals, but sent to four different locations. And they said, so you need 50. I said, no, I need 200, but I need them divided up. Da, da, da. And they're like, well, that's more than our, our like home base school is doing here. And I was like, interesting. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I told me that. Uh, so then I called Master Farrell and I said, Hey, um, this is what the conversation I just had was. He's like, Well, we've adjusted and changed the program enough. What would mm -hmm. it look like to make this our own if they're not going to do any updates? And so that was really a, kind of a pivotal point in there. And it was probably just around the time you were doing it because it wasn't but a couple of years after we had done our first session. So, yep. Yeah, it must not have been very long, but I still just can't believe I still have that manual. I'm gonna also, I'll, I'll, I'll set, snap a pic of it to you and I'll text it to you later today. So I know right where it is, yeah, Actually, but I can't get rid of it at this point. It's like, right. you said, it's like a relic. <laughs> we did, uh, so we did the, during that summer, when I came on to work full time, we went to Clearwater beach, Florida, did a martial arts conference called Maya, bought the program there. And then it's like, okay, let's study and figure this stuff out. And then we'll start toward the end of the year. So I actually took the manual with me to Korea and I was reading it while I was there and studying up on, you know, some of the stuff. Cause I knew when I got back, I knew to be ready to go. And I wasn't part of all the meetings and like, I wasn't in a lot of contact with anybody back here during that five weeks. So um, yeah, we came back and that was like a tiger by the tail. So. Yeah, that's awesome. All right. Well, we'll go to our first break. Um, our longtime listeners know that our Latinx segment is our notoriously short segment, and we like to talk a little bit of football. Um, I'm not going to give any spoilies. I know who your um, team is, but don't say anything yet. I especially want to save this for Harrison to find out, and we'll have a chat. So what we're going to talk about when we come back, Brandon, is your favorite NFL team and how you became a fan of that team, because that's the kind of origin stories of 
the fanatic part of football that we want to talk about. I feel like about. it's going to be a Bears or Packers fans well, based on just what you told me. So. You're going to have to stick around to find out, Harrison. So Absolutely. we'll be right back. <laughs> For over 15 years, Integrated Life Choices has empowered individuals with disabilities in Lincoln and throughout Nebraska. They provide comprehensive services from group homes and independent living services to job training, ensuring fulfilling lives for those that they serve. Now, they're inviting you to join their mission. If you are passionate about making a difference in the lives of people with developmental disabilities, explore rewarding career opportunities with them. Learn more about their services and apply today at www.ilc.net. Be a part of Integrated Life Choices, where your work truly changes lives. What do you think of when you hear the chocolate season? Artisan chocolates? Of course, they have the best chocolates this side of the Atlantic. Friendly neighborhood coffee shop? Yup, they're that too. A nationally recognized top tier brunch spot? Waffle weekends, baby. And the place to grab a gift for literally any occasion? Everybody loves chocolate. See for yourself at the chocolate season, 40th and Old Genie, or order ahead online at thechocolateseason.com. A team succeeds when they work together. Banking's no different. At UBT, we're in your corner for every financial move you want to make. Your money's backed by a roster of experts who put in the work to know you and your community. So whether you're opening a savings account, buying a home, or planning your future, you always know who to turn to. Working together toward your financial goals, that's a win in our playbook. Union Bank and Trust. Equal housing lender member FDIC. You can get diesel anywhere, but what about atomic diesel? That comes from Stern. Atomic diesel is your solution to all your cold weather problems. Prevent clogged fuel filters, increase your fuel economy, and save money with atomic diesel. Contact Roger at Stern today by calling 1 800 477 2744 to see how Atomic Diesel and the rest of their line of fuels and lubricants can keep your operation running at max capacity. Step into healing at Prairie Orthopedic and Plastic Surgery. Our team of top notch medical professionals turns pain into progress with state of the art treatments and compassionate care. Visit prairieortho.com and discover the difference in quality orthopedic and plastic surgery services tailored to your unique needs. Your health matters and Prairie Orthopedic and Plastic Surgery is dedicated to helping you thrive. Reach your full potential. Embrace a better tomorrow with Prairie Orthopedic and Plastic Surgery. Unearth the secret to long-lasting tires at Treads Central Tire Pros, a league apart in commitment, service, and expertise. This isn't just about rubber meeting the road, but trust, safety, and surety converging in perfect harmony. This is where expectations are exceeded every time. Make your appointment today at Tread Central Tire Pros just south of Cortland on Highway 77 or visit our website to explore our services. Remember, when it comes to tires, choose Tread Central Tire Pros because we tread differently. Finally, a good reason to have a smart house. Just say, Alexa, play 93.7 The Ticket and we'll magically start playing. How's it work? Nobody knows, don't ask questions. Hi, my name is Molly Party. I'm a realtor with MP Dodge Real Estate. I'm a newly licensed agent and considered numerous brokerages before deciding on MP Dodge. I chose the company that gives me the most support in my new career, plus guidance and encouragement along the way. MP Dodge has a unique mentoring program for new agents. It's helped jumpstart my career and has a supportive management team and administrative staff. So if you're contemplating a career in real estate, look no further than MP Dodge. It will be the best decision you make. Liberty Law Group is committed to the defense of liberty for those accused in the pursuit of justice for those injured. Liberty Law Group's relentless trial attorneys specialize in criminal defense and personal injury law. We believe in treating every client with respect, compassion, and understanding. We know that navigating the legal system is stressful and overwhelming, but Liberty Law Group will carry that burden for you. When you're facing legal issues, make the right call. 877-42-LIBERTY. That's 877-42-LIBERTY. <gasps> the Mill Coffee and Tea. Formerly with only four Lincoln locations. Guess what? What? There's five Lincoln locations now. Oh my gosh. That's 25% more Lincoln locations than there used to be. Can you even imagine a world where there's only four Lincoln Mill locations? Feels like ages ago. We were all so young then. <sighs> the Mill on 11th, located right alongside 93.7 The Ticket Studios, 1040 O Street. 
Now back to Fitness Fanatics on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. All right, we're back with Brandon Miller, and we want to talk about your football team. So um, just so you know, to give you a little bit of background here, um, Brandon, Jeff's not here today. He's a Bears fan. Um, Harrison's a Bears fan. I am a Packers fan. So we definitely, I kind of get stuck in the crossfire sometimes of Jeff and uh Harrison commiserating about being Bears fans, but rightly, rightfully so. Right. <laughs> you know? So um let let's hear from you. What who is your NFL team and when and why did you become a fan of that team? Nicole, I got your back. Go pack go. That's let's right. go. Okay. Yeah. All right. So Green Bay Packers all the way for me. Um been to a couple of games up there. I uh, love the frozen tundra, even though it gets to be brutally, brutally cold. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, the Green Bay Packers uh, is who I kind of liked the Lions when I was younger, but that was mostly because Barry Sanders, you know, that was just he was the man. Right. When I was I was growing up, um, they didn't really follow any football, anything like that. Uh, but as I got older and uh, met a few friends and things, we uh, kind of got turned on the Packers just because looking at the way that they kind of run the organization and how it's a kind of fans own team. Um, and then just looking at some of the players that they had and how they approached that from the, the coaching standpoint. Uh, through what they really, really stood for. Um, I mean, obviously, everybody's got their own stuff. but um, So was, was this cool. like the pre-Farve era or around the same time? No, I was familiar with Brett Favre, and, but that wasn't one of those things that really, you know, that was probably his, uh, during that, most of that era, I was just kind of, you know, like, yeah, football's great. I, I love playing okay. football way more than I love watching football, but it was really hard for me to sit still and, and make it through an entire game. Um, had some friends that like, that's all they wanted to do. And I was like, all right, let's just get outside. Let's just go move. Um, so, but yeah, Aaron Rodgers would have been just coming on as a quarterback, probably in his first two years um, at that point would, would be when I really started kind of digging in, understanding who was even on the roster for our team. So, uh, you know, Clay Matthews is obviously a big one that was in there too. And uh, I got to see uh, some of the guys come and go, but um yeah, just overall, really, really loved the way that they played the game at that time. And uh, it's been a whirlwind these last few years, for sure. I know. How, so <laughs> how, what was your feeling uh, last season when Aaron Rodgers got immediately sidelined um, <laughs> as the Jets? How did you feel about you know, that? Th that's one of those things, too, is like I spend so little time watching anybody with the Packers and still a little bit of time. Like during COVID for me was one of those things that, um, you know, obviously we didn't have football at that point. Right. Mm -hmm. But, um, I just realized how much free time that I had on Sundays, not worrying about all that. And then that's also so Monday, weird. not trying to follow the highlights. And I was like, you know, this is one of those things that's pretty far down the priority list for me. Um, and so as I look at it now, it's like, if I catch a game, I, I always say I'm a terrible Packers fan. Cause at some point on Monday, I look at my watch and say, uh, Hey Siri, what was the score of the Packers game? <laughs> if I don't, uh, you know, see it on the TV at the gym or anything like that. So Harrison is sitting over here with a tear <laughs> in his yeah, eye. I got some disgust right yeah. now. It's like, Oh, we got this good franchise. Oh, that they got great nice. quarterbacks year after year. And it's like, I can't even tell you what time they play. <laughs> I'm bitter. I'm, I'm coming out as bitter, but oh. as, you're, as you're aware, as the bears are your rivals, there's not a lot for us to cheer about. So we'll see what happens with Caleb Williams. Not on wood but oh my maybe gosh. just maybe we can get one of those generational quarterbacks you guys seem to get every single time who knows harrison maybe by the time you're 41 you'll get to the <laughs> point where the... i don't want to wait anymore i'm a bulls fan i'm a Brandon's husker fan 41 i, uh, I know <laughs> time's ticking I'm 25 years old i don't gotta you know I it's just also want one. really want funny because brandon you're probably one of the like uh nfl talking about your team in the more recent history, most of the time when we talk to people, they become fans when they're little kids. Yeah. And so I also can feel a little bit of that kind of animosity coming from you too, Harrison. Like, oh, yeah. oh, you started watching them in the 2000s and this is, oh. I how? started watching in the 2000s right. and I'm 25. Yeah, because so. you're 25. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Oh, you started watching Aaron Rodgers. Like, <laughs> But if you knew now what you, you knew then, what you know now. That's the... Yeah. Bears fan, yeah, uh, you, know? you have to say that. Yeah, well, I was a shout out Michael Jordan. He was the guy that really just 
Chicago locked in. Okay. So that was a big part of it. Sure. So I was always a basketball fan first, Chicago Bears, and my older brother. She's that as well. Mm-hmm. Green Bay Packer fan. So it could have gone either yeah. way. It's like the brother rivalry. Like, I'm not going to, yeah. I hate my brother right now. So why would I pick root for the same team? That makes sense. He's a great guy. Yeah. It was just, <laughs> but that makes nonetheless. Sense. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. I don't All know right. about you guys, but I'm, I was born in Iowa too. So like, we don't have a team. We've never had a team. <laughs> it's one of those things where it's just like, I mean, then yes. I, 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 you know, that's one of those things that I grew up my with a single mom for most of my life. And so she was not into sports whatsoever and neither was the rest of my family. So it's one of those things where it's just like that wasn't really a, you know, a staple in the home, too. So I, I get that as well. But, you know, it's uh, you know, it's definitely one of those things that's a lot of fun to to lean into and see how other people experience that culture as well. But, yeah, uh, baseball is another one. A lot of our family love baseball. And I'm like, okay, I'll go because I get to hang out with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's pr- your, and if Jeff was here right now, he would say, well, then you're probably saving yourself a lot of stress compared to what you guys have to go through. Or and, and, yeah. and not, I mean, I can't even say to me too, because I'm a very much notoriously casual football fan too. I watch it. I love it when I'm watching it, but then I just move on immediately. So, Mm -hmm. but yeah. All right. Well, we will go to break. And when we get back, we have our long stretch with Brandon. I want to talk a little bit more about kind of your journey with FXB and kind of how our paths have crossed during that time. So that's what we'll be talking about next. Um, Fitness Fanatics, stay around. For over 15 years, Integrated Life Choices has empowered individuals with disabilities in Lincoln and throughout Nebraska. They provide comprehensive services from group homes and independent living services to job training, ensuring fulfilling lives for those that they serve. Now, they're inviting you to join their mission. If you are passionate about making a difference in the lives of people with developmental disabilities, explore rewarding career opportunities with them. Learn more about their services and apply today at www.ilc.net. Be a part of Integrated Life Choices, where your work truly changes lives. At Fairway Meat Market, your family, and as part of the family, they want to save you money on your meat and groceries. Now through April 14th, enjoy USDA Choice 8-ounce bacon-wrapped sirloins for $3.99 each, USDA Choice Tri-Tip for $9.99 per pound, one dozen large eggs for $1.98 when you purchase two, and 24 packs of Miller Lite or Coors Light for $15.99 with the purchase of two. That's all at Fairway Meat Market in the Rockledge Square Shopping Center, just south of 84th and Van Door. Your business runs like a well-oiled machine. It's important that your actual machines do too. Stern is here to make sure you don't have to worry about that. They provide solutions for heavy equipment and automotive fuels, lubricants, and equipment guard options. And with Stern's commitment to customer service for the past 40 years, you know you have a partner to help support your operations for years to come. Contact Roger at Stern Company by calling 1-800-477-2744 or visit them online at stern.co. Stern Company, where problems meet solvers. Your home is your empire. Protect it with Empire Fence. Get a free instant quote with the online estimating tool at empire-fence.com. See an upfront estimate with no hidden fees. An Empire Fence can provide privacy and improve the appearance of your home. Keep kids and pets in or out of your yard. Increase security and add value to your property. Visit empire-fence.com now to view the stylish and maintenance-free possibilities for your home and get a free instant online quote. Let Empire Fence protect your empire. Hi, I'm Senator Bo Valley. I was born and raised in Lancaster County, learning the value of hard work and grit at a young age. I built my own company, creating jobs right here in our community. I know that families and businesses in our community need lower taxes, lower cost of health care, and a great education. That's why as your senator, I helped pass the largest task and made the most significant investment in education in Nebraska history and worked to reduce the cost of health care. I'm Senator Bo Ballard, and I humbly ask for your vote on May 14th. Paid for by Ballard for Nebraska. Alexa, play 93.7 The Ticket. Okay, playing 93.7 The Ticket. Alexa, turn down the lights. Dimming the lights. Alexa, order a pizza. The big one. All the toppings. Are you sure that's a good idea? Alexa. That's a lot of pizza for just one man. Alexa, just do it. Stop judging me, just do it. As you wish. Thanks, Alexa. You're my best friend. This is how we do every day. If you love them enough to turn off your music and pretend like their music is your music. Ah, this is mommy's jam. Then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. Let's play it again. 
Check today at NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Act Council. Step into healing at Prairie Orthopedic and Plastic Surgery. Our team of top-notch medical professionals turns pain into progress with state-of-the-art treatments and compassionate care. Visit prairieortho.com and discover the difference in quality orthopedic and plastic surgery services tailored to your unique needs. Your health matters and Prairie Orthopedic and Plastic Surgery is dedicated to helping you thrive. Reach your full potential. Embrace a better tomorrow with Prairie Orthopedic and Plastic Surgery. Alcohol has strained our relationship. Drinking too much can cause harm to friends, family members, and loved ones. By drinking less, we will save our relationship. If you or a loved one is looking for help, find a treatment facility near you at findtreatment.gov. For immediate support, call, text, or chat 988. Brought to you by Nebraska DHHS in partnership with SAMHSA. This is Lincoln's home for sports talk on the FM dial. Also online at theticketfm.com. On the internet. KNTK FM Firth, 93.7 The Ticket. Welcome into Fitness Fanatics on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Now here are your hosts, Jeff and Nicole Essig. All right, we are back, Fitness Fanatics. Um, Harrison, do you want to do all the things that people can catch us on? Because I don't have that off in my brain. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. You guys can always join in. As always, Soto Heyman text line, 402-464-5685. Put a face to the voice, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, Allo, channel 961, as always. Thanks. And you can catch us later on the podcast, too, on any Yep, podcast on the podcast. Get those platforms. on Amazon. Uh, you can always rewatch the full thing on YouTube as well. Mm -hmm. That's probably the best way if you want to replay it with the video. But, yeah, we'll have the podcast up usually around mid-afternoon today. You've been doing a much better job lately. Well, I get threats. I know. I don't. Megan has had <laughs> zero complaints. <laughs> so, good job. <laughs> All right, Brandon. So, we want to talk about kind of let's talk about barrels a little bit more too because i was telling harrison off the off air too how it feels weird and i'm sure that you've experienced this your entire career um in martial arts or extreme body shaping where um i call you a mentor um but you're younger than me and that's kind of weird so i don't know what you call someone <laughs> <laughs> younger, but you've been a part of the program for so long. Um, mm. You trained me to do kickboxing. Um, you were at the very first kickboxing class that I taught in Altoona. So um, definitely, I think that you've been what I would consider a mentor. I remember just a couple of years ago, posting a snippet of a video of me uh, doing a combination and you message me privately and tell me that I should make getting that punch up there higher. So like, it's just a part of you to, <laughs> <laughs> to, to mentor. And I'm like, you know what? You're right. I, I probably could have done better on that one. So um, let's kind of talk about that. So you kind of seamlessly went from kind of the martial arts side and just kind of worked right into the um, extreme body shaping side to our UBC and then extreme body shaping. Um, at what point, like, is this just, and this is how it's been for me too. I don't know if there was ever a time where I decided like, no, this is what I want to do. Um, but is this just been something that you've just always had a passion for since that, you know, since you very first started, uh, in the martial arts side? Yeah. So first, let me just say, um, uh, you guys' commercials on this show are hilarious. I'm listening to you guys. I'm sitting here. They're fantastic. And and then like every time we get back on, like I think you're dancing in your chair, and I'm kind of dancing. I do. Couch, I like, dance to the music. I don't even you're realize doing a lot of things really well. Okay. So well, well done. <laughs> Thanks. We've uh, been doing it for two years. So, yeah, well, yeah, yeah so. kind of like, well, how did I wait so long to hear about this? So. I feel bad. I haven't asked you to be on the show sooner, too. So it's kind oh, of tail between my legs oh, when I was asking you. I'm like, why haven't I had Brandon on sooner? So anyway, but yeah, I think, so, uh, you know, so something that kind of goes along with what you're talking about is uh, oftentimes I feel like what's familiar becomes hidden. So if it's familiar to us, we don't really realize that it's what we're doing. And so. Um, I'm one of those people who, if I'm learning something or experiencing something, I want everybody else, I can see the benefit of it. And I'm not afraid to share that with other people. I don't want to kind of keep it to myself and people go, what are you doing? That's different. And that's this and that and the other. And, 
Um, you know, I just want to make sure I share it out because I feel like that's how we that's how we grow. And that's uh, you give those possibilities to people. And often in FXB as well, we try and put a lot of good things into your routines and into your life so that there's a lot less room for that stuff that kind of derails you. Um, and yeah, it was a pretty young age that I realized that I really had a passion for doing this. Um, martial arts is one of those things a lot of the time because of the curriculum being what it is you do the same thing over and over and you try and just improve on these little, little deals. Um, I was talking to the, somebody the other day and they said something along the lines of, uh, you know, we've, we've got all these exercises that we do, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, but really we do jab, cross, hook, uppercut, knee strike, front kick, round house, switch foot. So we do eight moves in kickboxing, <laughs> but then mm -hmm. in training we do like a thousand. So how do we train and, and have people get in good position but even more importantly, how do they take that from the 45 minute class and do that in their life outside of there? So that's always been a big passion of mine. And, and the instructors that I've had have been fantastic about like martial arts shouldn't be just something you go do. FXB shouldn't be something you just go do. It's really part of who you are. It's who you, how you show up with those people around you. And if it's adding to that experience, that's fantastic. If it's taking away or it's not providing value, then that becomes some sort of an issue. So um, that's a big one for me to, to look at doing that for myself and continuing to grow that direction. Um, and I've seen that in you also as well, too. And then wanting to serve other people by putting that in front of them and seeing if they're interested in stepping into that just as the consumer part of it. But also then that giving back piece. Um, I think that that's what keeps people around a long time. Um, you know, a black belt, if you guys, Harrison, Nicole, if you guys came into Taekwondo with me right now, you'd be looking at four years to go to black belt. <laughs> so like, oh, that is a, I don't know what I'm going to be doing next year, let alone four years from now. Um, but then if it's important enough and you see that benefit coming through and in the community, the people that you get to hang around with, um, that's what really leads you in that direction. Um, so I, I think that I think, sorry to interrupt, but I think that I've been meaning to talk about this for a while actually on the show. So it's good that it that it came up right now, because I think that brings up a really good point. And it's one of the challenges that we see in health and fitness right now with you talking about, it takes four years uh, to become that black belt. And it's not, that's not even guaranteed, but, um, mm -hmm. and it takes repetition, repetition, repetition. But I think nowadays um, the fitness community, it's you, people don't understand that to get really good at something you kind of it should be a little bit boring like you know what i mean not that kickboxing is boring by any means but it's just like you find those things and you get really good at a few things instead of constantly trying to find the next thing and the next thing and the next thing and i think you've probably seen this with martial arts we've definitely seen it with fxb where mm -hmm. people are always trying to go to the next thing like what else can we do but it's like do we need to do that like can we all just sit back and get really good at doing these things and then seeing kind of how that compounds mm -hmm. professional athletes aren't constantly trying to change their training to get better they do the same things over and over and over again and at some point it might feel boring but when you step back and you realize the results you're getting from it, then that, that should be that motivation, right? Would you agree? Yeah. I think that um, you, you got to balance that between short-term reward versus long-term gain. And uh, really it's like, what do I want now versus what do I want more? It's kind mm -hmm. of the, the game that we always talk about too. And part of being a black belt is being consistently consistent. And you can be a black belt in business. You can be a black belt in your fitness. But that that level of excellence, you know, I don't know if you've used the quote from Bruce Lee, but he says something to the effect of don't fear the guy who can throw 10,000 kicks one time. Fear the guy who's thrown the same kick 10,000 times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. like we can do that and do it really well over and over and over again until it's, again, not just something that we have to think about doing, but it's something that automatically happens and does it really well, like, that's the name of the game, right? Because you're going to need to brush your teeth every day of your life. You're going to need to cook meals every day of your life. You know, there's some ways around that, but they might not be sustainable or be uh, getting you closer to the goals that you want. And then if you know those habits and routines, then you can make those slight adjustments and tweak them to be able to get a different result. You know, I always kind of think mm -hmm. about um, when I train our instructors and, and talk to our students and even with our kids, I said, okay, let's walk this down the line and figure out what's the fruit of planting this tree. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. like, okay, the tree's got to grow big enough. It's got to do all the things. It's got to take some time. But if I continue on this path, um, what's going to be the yield of that? And 
when you walk that out, nobody wants to do that because they're like, oh, I already know what you're going to say. And I was like, well, you know, already know, like in your gut that right. the decision or not. But it's just a matter of how often do we choose that, you know, what we want more um, because it's going to take a little longer. Um, you know, my daughter's swimming right now uh, for a, a group here in the Des Moines area. And she did a swim camp. And one of the girls was like, you only do four strokes. There's only four strokes to do. So practice all of them, but you can get so much better at your weaker points so much faster, but we try and go to that thing that we do really well and yeah. we just beat the heck out of it because we're doing it over because we love to do it because we're already good at it, but it's hard to get 1% better when you're at 98%. <laughs> it's That's easier so to yeah, 10% gain on something that we're really, you know, haven't focused on or maybe we're not, we're not great at right now. So yeah. Well, yep. you have a really good perspective too, because, uh, you work with, a ch you work with children and adults and you've worked in both the martial arts part and the ferals part. And so can you kind of talk about, because I always feel like at the beginning of a session at ferals, uh, F FXB, uh, there's so much that mental in those first couple of weeks for our members or for any adult starting something new as far in the fitness realm. But I feel like with ferals, it's a little more technical because you are learning a new skill. Like you're learning kickboxing. It's not like you're just going to start by just hopping on a treadmill and that's pretty intuitive. Like there's ways you can obviously get better at running, but you can pretty much start or even run outside. You could start running today and you, there's not a lot of that technicality that you have to have right away the way you do with kickboxing. And so sometimes for us, for me, dealing with mainly adults, it's really a balance of trying to help people understand that like, it's okay to be a beginner. It's okay mm -hmm. to not know how to do something because as adults, we don't learn new things very often. So I think sometimes that's what kind of sets people back in their 10 week session where if they can't kind of get over that uh, thought process of I'm really bad at this <laughs> and I just, I don't think I can do it because I'm not good at it immediately, but you're not supposed to be good at it immediately. Um, so how do you see how, like, what could our FXB members learn from what you've seen with um, the kids that you got, that you guys deal with, with martial arts, because I'm sure it's a different kind of dynamic for you. Yeah. We, I mean, in, in crude terms, we're like, be willing to suck at something before you're good at something. That's mm -hmm. a huge piece of it. Um, but also looking at it in terms of, um, you know, kids are pretty vulnerable and pretty outgoing. And like, we learn the behaviors of like, don't do that. Cause you're not going to be good at it. That's typically yeah. maybe we learn that from our parents or different experiences or getting our bullied ego. or all those kind of things too. Mm -hmm. So, um, and you know, that's one of those things. It's, it's a real deal. But if we look at being willing to fail at some of that stuff um, and we tell the kids all the time, it's just like, you're not going to be good at everything. You're going to test for a stripe and you're not going to get a stripe. And I try and pre-frame that because I don't want them to feel like, oh my gosh, I'm supposed to do all this and like get it the first try. I was like, it, it's okay if you don't. Um, you know, I said something about Chuck Norris earlier. Chuck Norris is probably one of the best martial artists that's ever been alive, uh, that's ever trained. And he failed a few black belt tests. And a lot of people don't know that about him. But that's a huge piece. Well, if you'd have quit then, I mean, Delta Force, that was a great move. No, it, it, it would be one of those things where we wouldn't have a lot in the martial, industry, martial arts industry had those people not gone through and um, overcome those failures and tried again and, and push forward. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, we, the kids that come into the classroom, they kind of uh, take, take those bumps and bruises as they go. And they're really good at bouncing back. And I got to give kudos to the parents too, because there's a lot of them that we talk about. There's going to be a time when they say, I don't want to come to class. And I did that to my mom too, because the weather's great outside. I'm playing with friends and everything else. And she would say, I understand get in the car. <laughs> yeah. Yes, mom. We, we were just talking about this yesterday because it's been really nice. So you mentioned this, but Brandon's in Des Moines, uh, the Des Moines area. And, um, so we've both been having really good weather. And mm -hmm. so yesterday wow. the weather was beautiful here. And so some of our nighttime classes were a little light. And I always jokingly say like in the Midwest, and this was very true in Iowa too, that a sunny 
day will keep people out of the gym more than like a snowstorm any day. Like mm. if it had been a snowstorm, people would still be showing up. But our right. that first like 70 degrees sunshine, everyone wants to be outside. That definitely keeps people. So it definitely applies to adults too. And I do think that that's something that parents if you're a parent, you can apply that to yourself too. And sometimes we don't do that. We aren't, I like to say we are um, hard on ourselves about the things that we can't control. And we're really easy on ourselves about the things that we can control. Mm -hmm. And so um, with parenting, like you're the person that has to be hard on your kids about the things that they can't control. You have to tell them, no, you committed to this. And so you're going to show up. Well, we're really easy on ourselves as adults when it comes to stuff like that. But then we're really hard on ourselves about the things that we can't control. Like you can't always control, like you're trying to lose weight. Weight loss is not just going to be, you know, a straight line down. So you may have a spike up in your weight, even though you're doing everything right. Well, you can't always control that. And we can beat ourselves up about that. Meanwhile, super easy on ourselves about the things we can control. And I think that's something that as adults, we should apply that to our lives the way that we would if it was our child wanting to succeed at something. Yeah, definitely. And I, and I think, too, you got to you got to learn to listen to your body. You got to learn to take kind of those things in stride and learn from your experience and the experience of other people as well, too, is that's why we have great coaches. We've got instructors. We've got, you know, it's like if you miss a workout, don't miss two workouts in a row. Like, yes, figure out how to get it in. And I respect those people who are like, okay, I, I'm doing this program because I'm doing martial arts, I'm doing body shaping, I'm working out because I want to go hike more mountains. So when there's a nice day and I choose to go hike a mountain, it's not like I skip my workout. It's like, that's what I do this for. Uh, but then all my friends are at the gym asking me where I am. <laughs> it's like, yeah. so if you can do both, even better. Um, if you have to choose, that's one of those things that, um, you know, getting outside, I know for us, a lot of the times too, our um, getting outside and get some sunshine is awesome. We did a ton of yard work yesterday, which was super boring and methodical and all the things, pulling the weeds and doing this. I said, and when you get done, you feel so accomplished mm -hmm. um, so that, you know, but teaching your kids that sometimes you get to do these things because we have a lot of privilege in what we're doing. And that's a huge piece of it is just not always taking the easy path and um, sloughing off. But at the same time, making sure that there's a plan where maybe it is you looking ahead and saying, Hey, the first nice day that we have, let's get out on our bikes and do that. Um, yeah. Out of any black belt test that I've ever done. I think, um, you know, I actually ran the marathon in green Bay because you got to run through the Packer stadium. That's so cool. I realized yeah. the day before when we showed up for like the expo that if you ran the half marathon, you also got to run through the stadium. Super <laughs> mad. Well, that was but... <laughs> planning on your part. You probably could have changed it. I, have, but I trained for the full. <laughs> <laughs> I committed. Yeah. Um, but, you know, looking that's interesting. At, I'm going to have to look into that. I am retired from full marathons, but I am definitely still all in on half marathons. So, hey, hmm. hey that might be yeah. something. Yeah. I know. Interesting. Um, it's just looking at those different situations in life yeah. and really figuring out, like, and, and obviously, it's if we just put your head down and stick into the grind, like, yeah, I can feel good and I can look good, but am I really experiencing my best life? Out of anything that I've ever done, parenting is by far the hardest for oh, sure. Yeah. Um, and parenting myself, because I'm a big believer that we're all just big kids. And so when we we talk about these things, it's like I teach what I need to hear the most. So I get to reapply that knowledge for myself over and over and over again, um, just like I'm expecting the students or my my kids to do as well, too. So yeah, yeah. fitness, fitness is one of those things too, where it's like you have to get at some point you can get to a point where those activities can be interchangeable, but we're not always there yet. So mm -hmm. yeah, someone could say, well, I'm doing, you know, I'm doing ferals because I want to get back into running shape or I want to do more hiking and stuff like that. But at some point you, st you still have to kind of put your nose to the grindstone and put that work in until that point where those activities then do easily become interchangeable. So for yeah. me, like I am a runner now, so I know that I could right now go run for 45 minutes easily. Um, so I could skip a kickboxing workout, a, you know, a Farrell's cardio workout and run for 45 minutes, but someone who's in week three of their 10 week session and hasn't ran for years and years and years probably shouldn't tell themselves, well, I'm going to skip my 45 minute Farrell's workout and I'm going to go do a run because 
those are not interchangeable for you yet. Like you're not at that point yet where you could just, you know, automatically swap one for the other. So like you said, it's like putting that work in ahead of time. So then you can do everything that you want um, and being honest with yourself. Like, okay, I'm going to skip this 45 minute workout to go run, but then actually being really realistic with yourself and being like, will I get the same level of an intensity of a workout where I am right now? And so it's such a hard balance to be. How many people have you heard say, I would rather do a 45 minute kickboxing class than go run the mile? Oh yeah. Me for so <laughs> All long. All the time. I'm like, because I know. it's what's familiar. It's what's fun. It's like, and I'm not anything against running, but that was one of those things that you put a lot. I mean, and I was listening to technique on it and run without headphones sometimes. So then you're not just blunt, you know, and no, thank you. absolutely and not, play. but you do um, you, if that's yeah. what you want. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, there's, and there's a lot of ways to do it, but I always, I'm a big believer. The best exercise that you'll ever do is the exercise that you'll keep doing. Yeah. And yes, it should involve some sort of strength and it should involve some sort of getting your heart rate up and being out of breath. And because that's how you challenge yourself. I mean, that's the best stress you can put yourself under anytime. You know, everybody's like, don't stress yourself out. Don't please stress yourself out in doing workouts that you can build back from and get stronger. Please be cautious of those things that stress you out and it just causes you to worry. And um, is, you know, um, there's, I mean, kind of look at this line. People are like, well, can you drink too much water? I was like, yes, but you have to drink so much water to have a negative effect on your life. Like, yeah. Can you smoke too many cigarettes? Yeah, one is pr- too many, right? That's what <laughs> right. It brings down your uh, life expectancy. I was like, so figuring out what those are and then, uh, you know, adjusting accordingly to what it is. I think that that's a, a good rule to, to play. And you got to be curious about that because, I mean, I always think, you know, even in the last few years, I realized how different everybody is from myself and the way that they learn, uh, what works for them, all those kind of things. Like it shouldn't take me 35 years to figure this out. But right. at the same time, if we I have say, the- slow learning is still learning, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> no. You have so many slowly. more life experiences now is the thing. Like you, yeah. you're coming from a different place of life experience. So that makes a huge difference too. Yeah. So and what we- do you think real quick before we go to break? Um, what do you think in the last, like all these, this, the decades of being in this world, what do you think some of the biggest challenges that people are facing like right now when it comes to kind of health and fitness? Like, what do you think? And how has that changed? I mean, we only have a couple minutes, but like, what do you think has been kind of those biggest barriers now? And how has that changed over the last, you know, 35 years that you've been kind of in this world? Yeah, I don't think that the um, processed food industry has done us any favors. (laughs) That's a huge part of this is really convenient. But uh, a lot of people um, don't know how to prep their own meals or understand Mm -hmm. like what they're putting in their body as far as I mean, um, a friend, a friend of mine talks about like added sugar in anything. They're like, if you treated added sugar, like a recreational drug, think about like, oh, there's a lot of things I'm going to set up to be able to, you know, really overload on this. If it, you know, what drawing that parallel would be really, really huge or just figuring out how some of those things that we're putting into our body are going to cause, um, outcomes of what it is that are down the road. Um, and, and then, you know, the exercise piece, I think a comparison nerd is huge, right? No baby grew up looking across the street at the other baby, trying to learn how to walk and like, was all worried about like, yeah. so when we look at that social media or, well, this program's doing this and that program's doing that. Um, you know, we've, we've had a lot of fitness programs come and go in our area over the years, but if we would have focused on what they're doing, we wouldn't have been focusing on our members and have an impact in what we get to be for them. Um, and then that's what we challenge them to do also for their family. Cause that's, that's a big challenge that they see when they start the program too. Um, yeah. So I think that um, going back to the unshakable truth is like, are we being true to, to who we are and what we want to do, the impact that we want to have, and then not being so tied to like, this is the way that it has to be, but knowing that there's a lot of different roads to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, a big like part what of you said, find what you like to do and just do that. Yeah. And, and I still train and, and work out so I can do martial arts. Like if mm-hmm. I wasn't doing that, martial arts would be really, really much more challenging for me. Um, just as I get older and figure out, we're all just working out between injuries at some point. And so you got to <laughs> figure out like, okay, I can do this, but that's not good for my shoulder right now. I need to give it some rest and work on some other stuff. That's a, that's a real thing. So yes, absolutely. All right. So we'll take our, we'll take a break and we come back. I want to talk a little bit more about the martial arts part of it and kind of how you've 
uh, gone through kind of that journey and all that stuff. So that's what we'll talk about next when we come back. Sounds good. For over 15 years, Integrated Life Choices has empowered individuals with disabilities in Lincoln and throughout Nebraska. They provide comprehensive services from group homes and independent living services to job training, ensuring fulfilling lives for those that they serve. Now, they're inviting you to join their mission. If you are passionate about making a difference in the lives of people with developmental disabilities, explore rewarding career opportunities with them. Learn more about their services and apply today at www.ilc.net. Be a part of Integrated Life Choices, where your work truly changes lives. Unearth the secret to long-lasting tires at Treads Central Tire Pros, a league apart in commitment, service, and expertise. This isn't just about rubber meeting the road, but trust, safety, and surety converging in perfect harmony. This is where expectations are exceeded every time. Make your appointment today at Tread Central Tire Pros just south of Cortland on Highway 77 or visit our website to explore our services. Remember, when it comes to tires, choose Tread Central Tire Pros because we tread differently. Empower a child today with the Teammates Mentoring Program. Hope is only a conversation away when you choose to share your talent, time, and heart with a child. Together, you can build a relationship based on strengths and chart a brighter future one week at a time. Find out how you can be a mentor by visiting LincolnTeammates.org. Become what you needed as a kid by joining the Teammates Mentoring Program today. John Henry's has a brand new membership club to protect your entire home in one program. With a VIP and a deluxe option, we will help you find the plan that best fits your needs. Receive discounts on services and equipment, priority service, complimentary inspections, and so much more. Protect your home's plumbing, heating, cooling, and electrical systems all in one membership. Call John Henry's to learn more. 435-5555, John Henry's Plumbing, Heating and Air, and Electrical. This is former Husker and NFL linebacker Jay Foreman. For years, I've suffered from degenerative problems at both of my ankles, but thanks to a thorough and thought-out plan provided by Advanced Medical Imaging, I was able to get my life back with the least amount of pain as possible. While working through multiple options, the team of physicians at Advanced Medical Imaging were there to answer any questions I had. If you're experiencing any pain at all, want to get your life back, go to amimaging.com or give them a call at 402-484-6677. Advanced Medical Imaging located at 7601 Pioneers Boulevard. When you were a kid, clubs were cool. Robotics club and space club and stuff like that. But what do adults get? Book clubs and quilting clubs? Nah, forget that. How about margarita clubs and old-fashioned clubs? Get to Upside Bar and Lounge for the best clubs in town. Try all 10 varieties of Upside margaritas or old fashions, and take home a free souvenir glass. Grab the whole crew and pair it with Taco Night on Mondays or Whiskey Wednesdays. Upside Bar and Lounge at 29th and Pine Lake. Wall-to-wall wine and spirits is now open in Lincoln. Shop our expansive collection of wine, beer, spirits, and cigars at 5040 North 27th Street. From top shelf liquor to crowd favorite beer, Wall to Wall Wine and Spirits has a beverage for every taste and every budget. Plus, join our loyalty program to earn rewards and save on future purchases. Shop Wall to Wall Wine and Spirits at 5040 North 27th Street in Lincoln. That's 5040 North 27th Street. Constructors is now hiring for all positions, with laborers starting at $23 and up based on experience. Constructors has immediate job openings for laborers, mechanics, bridge builders, operators, and drivers. Start your new career today. Constructors offers great pay, health, dental, and vision insurance, paid time off, paid holidays, and so much more. Join the crew today and be a part of Nebraska's oldest paving company dating back to 1908. For a complete list of openings and to apply online, visit ConstructorsLincoln.com. 93.7 The Ticket is proud to provide listeners with daily opportunities to win contests and prizes on our airwaves, and we'd like to take this opportunity to remind you of a couple rules. All participants must be 21 or older and must wait 30 days after winning a prize before participating in another contest. Once you win, you have 30 days to pick up your prize at the KNTK Studios, 1040 O Street in Lincoln, or your prize will be forfeited. Thank you for participating in our contest, and thank you for listening to 93.7 The Ticket. Now back to Fitness Fanatics on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. All right, we are back. Fitness Fanatics uh, chatting with Master Brandon Miller, right? That's what we call you, Master Brandon Miller. <laughs> If you want to, yeah. Yeah. Well, we're going to talk about the martial arts side. So kind of talk to us about that. Like, what has your journey looked like 
um, from the martial arts standpoint, because a lot of people listening probably don't kind of understand that world beyond uh, just a black belt. So like, what has that progression looked like for you? What kind of competitions have you been involved with? And what does that look like now, having been in martial arts for so long? So if someone's wanting to think about getting into it right now, what's that going to look like? 30 years down the road for them too, if they stick with it. So kind of talk about that a little bit. Yeah. When we were talking earlier, um, we talked about black belt and during the 10 week session, I've never heard anybody and correct me if you have a different experience than I do, but I've never heard anybody said, I really regret going to my workout today. Right. I really yeah. regret following through and finishing the challenge. I really regret doing the one year 10 K. I really regret getting my black belt. Everybody comes in and they regret quitting. Mm -hmm. Everybody comes in like my kids want to do martial arts. I only got to green belt and I wish I, I wish I would have stuck with it. I just wish somebody would have pushed me a little harder. So I don't feel bad as a coach or instructor leaning into those parents and saying, I don't want them to have regret down the road. Like there's a time to choose off and it can happen a lot of different ways, but I want to make sure that we're, we're really clear on, on what this looks like going forward. So, you know, I was, I started martial arts around the age of five. Um, I was lucky enough not to have my school clothes, my master move, and we didn't move the whole time. So we just kind of hung out in Des Moines, all of my family, we all kind of grew up around here and then they've all moved, but I've remained here. And so uh, a lot of that was because of my job and what I feel like God's called me to do um, as a ministry through our martial arts program, but also leading instructors and, and building them through uh, the programs. If I, I think about if I would have never trained you as an instructor in FXB, yeah. all the people that are impacted through you, like that's like going back. Like, I don't think about that every day, but when I do, I'm just like, man, I, I agree. This amount of gratitude. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that too. Um, all of the people that we've had go go through the program, things that I've helped people with, and the things that they've accomplished, it's like, um, it's just so cool to be part of their story, you mm -hmm. know. And it's not, and I know that you're you feel this way too. It's not taking credit for anything because obviously you've trained a lot of people, and not everybody that you've trained to be an instructor has gone on to be an owner of a Farrell's Extreme Body Shaping. Like you know, so from both of our standpoints, it's not like an ego thing. It's not like a thing saying like taking credit for all of this stuff, but it's just like a blessing to be a part of these stories. It's very cool. I agree a hundred percent. And when you said that too, you're like, sorry for not having you on before. And I was like, Oh, I didn't really, I mean, you don't need to be sorry. It's the, not yeah. a big deal, but even thinking about being in those first classes with you and, and seeing how far you come is it, that brings me a lot of pride, but I'm even more excited for you mm -hmm. and all the people that you get to impact to um, like pebbles in the pond, right? We don't know where those ripples stop. And so we get to have that impact and we shouldn't take that lightly, but at the same time, it, it's up for what it is. You know, we're always looking for those next people that we can help. So, yeah. um, yeah, my, so we have a four year black belt program. Like you said, that's as short as it can kind of be. I know that's mm -hmm. not the same with all martial arts, but, um, took me 10 years. And so <laughs> I took <laughs> nine to get my recommended black belt. Cause I was in and out of the classroom and, uh, my uncle Jamie moved and he was kind of my ride. And then my mom got in, but I was busy with other activities, all the things, but eventually committed to uh, get my black belt. And then after that, it's uh, our martial arts program works that if you get your black belt at a first degree, you have to wait a year at least to go to second. And then when you're a secondary, you got to wait at least two years to go to third, three years to go to fourth. So if everything stays on track, I'll get my ninth degree black belt when I'm 65. Mm, okay. Right yeah. <laughs> six degree black belt. Um, and I'm up for promotion to seventh um, here. Currently, my time has been kind of my time and rank is served. Uh, what we're looking at now is the impact that I have on the community, um, the, the students that I'm producing, the uh, you know, who, what's coming from that. Uh, one of our instructors left uh, just about a year ago and started his own martial arts school. And mm -hmm. so I understand that that's how our program grows and how it how it moves on. And even though sometimes it's not in the way that you think it's going to be. So yeah. that's another big piece of that, too, is the like you said, what's the fruit that's coming from this tree that you've planted? But, um, you know, if you go to I was 18 years old, came on full time staff, started teaching martial arts every night. Um, I did not do very well taking care of myself because I don't think I took a day off like the whole first year that I was there every day um, and then realized that's not sustainable. So um, became the head instructor at our location um, when Todd Dorr was promoted to kind of a more of a management over the few locations that we had. Um, and I was the youngest head instructor in the country at that point at 19. Mm -hmm. And so I was in charge of uh, about 350 students at that time and then also helping to run the body shaping and, and things like that. Um, so that was huge. And then from there, my role really didn't change a whole lot. I was just in charge of that. 
uh, promoting our students, training our staff, uh, keeping the school running as we moved ahead. Uh, went through a couple of different ownership shifts, but always had great close ties to Master Farrell. He was always involved with that. Um, and then really, you know, thought like there's not much we really need to change about the program because we're serving the students really well and they're having a good experience, um, but also trying to get better at what we're doing and adapt to the times. Um, come along COVID, we moved to, uh, we chose to take two of our martial art locations and combine it to one location um, the week that COVID closed everything down. It was literally on Wednesday and our owners are like, well, what do you guys think? I was like, I think we can't be the place where a whole bunch of kids go get sick because we'll never mm -hmm. reopen. So yeah. I said, we're going to go virtual like literally tonight. And so uh, we flipped from Wednesday night, Thursday morning. We let everybody know, hey, we're going to be in all online classes. By Friday morning, the government had said everything's done. Like you can stay at home, uh, shelter in place sort of a deal. So we were a little bit ahead of the curve, but we had this brand new facility where we didn't have anybody step in the doors for six months. Mm -hmm. and so that was a crazy challenging time. Um, we started back with hybrid classes. Uh, we'd obviously ran classes. We ran a whole black belt testing group uh, and promoted 17 black belts during that time. And then wow. we ran another one later on because we do that twice a year. So we kept business up and going and then um, got back into full person eventually and then continued to grow the program from there. And then about eight months ago, the location came up for sale again. And I was lucky enough, fortunate enough to be able to go in with my business partner, Josh Curry, and we actually purchased the martial arts location. So totally new role again after doing this for 22 years. Um, but yeah, so we are officially eight months into ownership now. So. That's awesome. Yeah. And we do got one for the text line that I want to okay. get to. This one from Crowbait. Uh, I says, started martial arts when I was four, quit years later when I was 15 and regretted it ever since. Uh, I'd argue that it's, you know, never too late to kind of get into it. And I'm kind of curious yeah. your thoughts. People that are older, you know, that maybe are still curious about getting into it. What would you have to say to those guys? Yeah. So we've got um, generational black belts in our program. And through the years, like we've got kids that do it. And then their parents are like, I should probably do it. And then you have some grandparents who are like, hey, can I do it? Like literally this one gal, Mary, uh, fantastic member. She took me out to lunch and was like, be real with me. <laughs> I'm like 60 years old. Can I do this if I start today as a white belt? And we make accommodations because like, are you giving the best that you can do? Not every martial arts program is like that. Stand up fighting like Taekwondo is different than Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So there's a lot of variables, but um, I've never met anybody who regretted going in and trying it out, make sure it's a good fit, you know, and then uh, lean into your training and um, at least give it a season, you know, for a white belt to gold belt, like train a season of martial arts and then see, and then decide from there. And then pretty soon, okay, I'm going to go a year. I'm going to commit to doing it for a year get better at it, you know, go after it and then, you know, see what that looks like uh, down the road. But I, I always say, no, it's never too old to, to start training. Um, and you just got to decide what that looks like for you. And, you know, and, and talk to those people in your life that you really care about and trust and see, see what they think. Cause typically they're going to be pretty supportive of you doing something new, like we talked about before, Nicole. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, kind of widen your perspective on that too. You learn a lot that you learn a lot about, you don't know what you don't know. So that's a, yeah. that's a big piece of it. Yeah. So what in your, uh, career in martial arts, like what are some of your, so if Jeff was here, he would talk about, um, the bears, <laughs> no, NFL draft. that would have already been <laughs> happening. Um, <laughs> so he would talk about like your one shining moment, or as he says, your Al Bundy moment, <laughs> um, as in martial arts, what would that be for you? Like, what's the one thing that like you're super proud of the thing that you did that stands out in your mind? Um, when Jeff tells the story, his is always like very less than stellar things. But um, we'd also like to hear that hear from people who are actually really good at the things that they're doing. <laughs> so what, what would I prefer to say one shiny moment? What would you your one shiny moment for yourself personally in your martial arts career? What would that be for you? You know, um, I, I competed when I was younger at a lot of tournaments and um, we did a lot of, they were kind of local and competed on the national level just a little bit as a young kid. But as I got older, I realized that like, that's not where, that doesn't bring me a lot of joy. That brings me a lot of anxiety and I mm -hmm. can train really hard from that. And there's some really good lessons. I always recommend kids try a few tournaments because you learn so much uh, from that experience. And it's a lot like wrestling tournaments. It's hurry up and wait. You know, you're waiting and waiting and waiting. And sometimes at national tournaments, you're not fighting till 10 o'clock or one in the morning or something. And then if you're the coach, you got to coach the kids on how to deal with that and all the things. But um, and I competed at what, what really cool one after my Uncle Jamie had moved. 
Um, he was in Texas. And then the Nationals that year when I was uh, 17 was going to be in Las Vegas. And I was like, cool. So I had to like maintain my same weight. So that was a big thing because we we qualified in March. I grew like two inches and tried to gain some weight before July. Um, so I was like trying to cut weight and stay stay there because otherwise it's a black belt. You're disqualified. But um, went in and I'd never won a match at nationals before. Like I competed, but I always lost my first match. And I did okay in our forms, you know, because the scoring system and so on. But I had like 108 people or something in my division. So I would have had to fight and win 10 matches to be able to make it to the end. Um, and so I get out there and like you're sitting around and doing all this stuff. But the other part of it too, my uncle Jamie was at Chuck Norris's Kick Drugs Out of America National Teacher Convention in Vegas the same week. And he's like, if you win all your matches, you're going to miss this banquet. I got you an extra ticket to meet Chuck Norris and be at this banquet. If you lose, <laughs> you could be at the banquet, maybe, depending. So I was like, well, I'm not just going to throw it away. I'm going to like go for it. So I show up to my first match. I'm getting warmed up and ready. And I see this guy that I, it's really familiar that goes in. He's kind of chatting with the coach of the other player. And I was like, that's his name's Han Wan Lee. Well, he was the coach of the Olympic team at the time, Taekwondo team. He's talking to Stephen Lee, who's on the Olympic team. And then Stephen Lee goes and sits in the coaching chair of the guy that I'm going against. And I was like, oh, no, awesome. <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> and so I was like, I think I drew the hardest guy, like the first one out of the gate. Right. And this was, I mean, in my head, it was like gladiators in the Coliseum. It was points back and forth. And like, I get a point, I counter and this, that. And then there's a, you know, it came down. I end up winning the match by a half point. I was Ooh. so proud. I was like, this is fantastic to win my first one and then i went on to win uh four matches after that lost my fifth match um but it was it was a really cool experience and it wasn't like this wasn't the title and i wasn't first place in anything but for me that was a huge win and as much as i see those kind of things because there's been a handful of those moments where we've done a big demo and been featured on a, a lot of different great stages um the bigger part for me is when um one of our students kennedy goes to nationals and there's a girl there that's got some mental and, and physical limitations and she doesn't have anybody in her division. And she, they're asking to do an exhibition with all these other people. And they're like, no, my fighter could get hurt or like, that's just going to waste our energy. And then we don't have it for later. And this little, I mean, she's probably 12 years old at the time. She's like, why won't you guys give her a chance? She's like, I'll fight her. Like, and she stepped in and did something that like, oh, to this day, like brings so much joy to my heart. And like, those are the wins that I look for each and every day. And it's happening whether we see them or not, but it wouldn't happen if we didn't show up and give our best and be in the moment with our students and, and, and train our, our folks and our members because they're having wins all the time in their family. And it's great when they tell us about them, but you know they're happening when they don't share that story. And you just got to trust in the process that because we see those wins for ourselves and when we're in the moment present enough to, to notice them. And then when we share them, that causes other people to start seeing them too. Right. Yeah, that's awesome. I think yeah, your definitely. story is similar to mine where, and it took me a while to understand this, but I am um, athletic, but I'm not competitive in a way that I was never good in sports in school because I didn't have that competitive like drive to dive for a volleyball or fall down for any reason. Um, and so, but once I became, started ferals and got into fitness in that, in my twenties, I realized I'm really athletic. I really enjoy, um, working out, exercising, pushing myself, challenging myself, inspiring other people, being inspired by other people. And once mm -hmm. I made that shift, it made all the difference in everything. Um, so I think that's kind of what you, you maybe learned too about yourself. Like that's, great, but that's not the reason. That's not your why. So that's, that's awesome. Yeah, well, we have there were other people in my life that, that fostered that for sure too. My parents, my instructors, everybody, sure. they're like, this is not the end all be all. This is not the biggest deal. Um, but Hey, go and give your best. Yeah. Well, we have one more break. We'll come back and we have one little last segment with you and we'll wrap it all up on fitness fanatics. Sounds good. Irrigation contractors in Lincoln go out of business every year, leaving sprinkler system orphans begging for service. The folks at Judson Irrigation shed a tear for these little fellas. They've been coddling these orphans for more than 40 years. From redesign, repairing, replacing, and restoring, remember the Judson Irrigation Orphanage. Call the Judson Irrigation Orphanage, 402-420-6277 or judsonirrigation.com. 
For over 15 years, Integrated Life Choices has empowered individuals with disabilities in Lincoln and throughout Nebraska. They provide comprehensive services from group homes and independent living services to job training, ensuring fulfilling lives for those that they serve. Now, they're inviting you to join their mission. If you are passionate about making a difference in the lives of people with developmental disabilities, explore rewarding career opportunities with them. Learn more about their services and apply today at www.ilc.net. Be a part of Integrated Life Choices, where your work truly changes lives. Spring is here. It's time to get back outside and into proper shoes this year. Brown Shoe Fit is the place to buy this spring with their sale on athletic shoes. Get $15 off any regular price athletic shoes with respected brands like Hoka, Brooks, New Balance, and On Running. And don't forget, Browns carries a large arrangement of sizes and widths to fit your feet properly. Start your spring off right at Brown Shoe Fit, just south of 66 and Q in Lincoln. Sandhills Global is hiring. With their fast-paced, growing culture, they have hundreds of new openings in sales, marketing, traveling support, software development, web design, and more. Full-time roles offer a four-and-a-half-day work week, along with flexible internships in most areas. Career and internship opportunities are available at our global headquarters in Lincoln, Nebraska. Find your fit today at www.sandhills.jobs. Here you go. Coffee's on me and my new BFF. I thought I was your best friend forever. BFF like best financial friend at Members Own Credit Union. Right now, they're offering $100 when you consolidate or transfer a loan or an existing credit card balance and meet requirements. Plus, you get great rates and free advice from a financial partner that will put you first. That sounds like a match made in heaven. Members Own Credit Union is the type of bestie you can count on. Get started today at MembersOwnCU.org slash BFF. Limitations may apply. Equal housing opportunity. Hello? Hello? Believe it or not, old phones are one of the most common pain points in offices today. Many of these phones are beyond repair because parts aren't available to fix outdated devices. Whether it's a traditional phone system or cloud-based VOIP technology, Hamilton Business Phones can help upgrade your connection. We make it easy to sync your office phone with yourself for seamless call handling, no matter where you work. If your current office phone can't do this, you deserve better. Hire your local experts. Hire Hamilton at hamiltonisbusiness.com. Your home is your empire. Protect it with Empire Fence. Get a free instant quote with the online estimating tool at empire-fence.com. See an upfront estimate with no hidden fees. An Empire Fence can provide privacy and improve the appearance of your home. Keep kids and pets in or out of your yard. Increase security and add value to your property. Visit empire-fence.com now to view the stylish and maintenance-free possibilities for your home and get a free instant online quote. Let Empire Fence protect your empire. Okay, it's time to sell the house. How do we even begin to choose from the hundreds of realtors in town? Easy. We make a pros list. You mean a pros and cons list? No, just a pros list. We need someone with pro photography to showcase the house in the best possible way. Pro marketing to make sure we get maximum exposure. Pro negotiations so we know we get the best price. This is one of those times where you already know the right answer, isn't it? You know it is. Ben Bleicher and Professional Realty Group. Contact Ben Bleicher and the team at Professional Realty Group of Berkshire Hathaway's Home Services Ambassador online at prg-ne.com. Hi, schoolers. Unleash your creativity and learn about potential careers in broadcasting at the Digital Expressions Media Camp. Have fun, make friends, and get hands-on experience with video and radio production June 9th through the 14th at the University of Nebraska at Kearney. Scholarships are available from the Nebraska Broadcasters Association and spots are limited. Learn more at digitalexpressionscamp.com. That's digitalexpressionscamp.com. Early break with Sip and Jake. I called. You didn't return the call. Uh, called yeah. a couple times yesterday. No, nothing. Uh, I, but I did crickets. Trust, hold it. I called first. And then I got this. I don't know where Sip was. If you're in the bathroom, <laughs> I get the. He goes, he has to go. Hey, hang tight. I'm right right now. <laughs> and I don't know. I'm like, well, why are you whispering to me? He said it just like that. Hey, uh, sit tight on that one. I'm uh, I'm right now. And I'm like, what is he doing? Is he in the us, bathroom or what? Where are you at? Can you give us the, the scoop of what happened? Yeah, where sip. were you when I called you? Because I did call you back. <laughs> Hang tight. That was kind of Hang tight. I'm, I'm right now. Early break with Sip and Jake from 6 to 8 every weekday morning on 93.7 The Ticket. Now back to Fitness Fanatics on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. 
All right, we are back on our final little segment here on Fitness Fanatics. Wanted to thank you, Brandon, so much for joining us today. It's been a long time coming, having you on, talking about just everything health and fitness. Um, So what do you have? Let's talk about just what you have coming up, you know, in the future and stuff like that. How can people, if they want to follow along with your martial arts journey, like where where people can kind of follow along with that. So what do you, do you have any, anything coming up here on the horizon? Yeah. So uh, first of all, my pleasure being on the show. It's always good to connect and uh, it's awesome to just be able to have a, a conversation back and forth. And this is like how we would talk if you were sitting here uh, at the gym right now or, you know, in mm-hmm. our living room and that's the the best kind of conversation, I think. So um, the things that we've got going on right now, we are, uh, you can follow us on Farrell's Martial Arts on our Instagram. We're also there right on YouTube and then also on Facebook as well too. So we've got those available. You can always uh, personally friend me uh, too. So pretty easy to miss. Uh, I think one of the only Brandon Millers with a big beard. (laughs) So um, that's uh, easy to find me there too. Um, Reach out anytime. You can get a hold of us, feralsmartialarts.com. All of our email, our schedule and everything if you're in the Des Moines area is right there as well. So we've uh, leaned in a little bit to doing some yoga at our facilities. And so I saw that. You posted about it the other day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so we got a sauna that's on the way also. And so we're going to um, that's great for personal use, but also we, uh, we know that that's got some great benefits. So our families that are just kind of sitting watching their kids, if they don't want to jump into the classes, then we offer that for them. We'll be doing that. And then we've got some personal training. My business partner, Josh Curry is a personal trainer and we've got the space, uh, there to be able to do that with a little bit of equipment and one-on-one sessions, you know, much like you and I have trained one-on-one before some people want that, uh, um, hone their skills in kickboxing. So let's do some mitt training, give me some pointers on the bags um, in, in a side of just a regular class. So a lot of bits and pieces on that. And then we've got our black belt class. We just graduated a new class of black belts to their first black belt or uh, our highest ranks are going to third degree black belt. They're going to be doing an extravaganza here uh, on May the 4th be with you um, over at the Waukee High School. So that's going to be a, a big presentation for them. Demo teams get to do all their stuff, uh, break boards, do some forms. And then we finish off with letting them all attempt their first brick breaking. So Ooh. yeah, <laughs> I've, bo- I've broken a board before, but I don't think I would try a brick. I feel like I need a little more training. Rick. <laughs> I think you've got what it takes to be able to do that, but it is uh, definitely the mind over matter game. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So is that something that you still do? Like, are you still, do you still do that just like for funsies? Is that something that someone in martial arts does for fun? Yeah, I think some people uh, more than others um, <laughs> with, uh, with doing that, you know, breaking boards is always a good time, but at the, some, at some point too, you realize like, how far do I need to keep pushing myself? A good buddy of mine, Chip Townsend, owns Holy. We've Fit. had him on the show, actually. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. And Dave cool. Kovar has been on the show also. So yeah, I thought of Chip when you said that. Actually. <laughs> yeah. So I would like to get with him and figure out. Uh, I was thinking of my next black belt test, maybe to do a, a round kick through a Louisville Slugger. That would be pretty cool. Oh my gosh. Because <laughs> he's done like three at a time, like at the same yeah. time. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I just can't imagine now. And I've seen you kick the kickbox, a kickboxing bag, but I just can't imagine what, what does that take mentally? Like, how do you prepare mentally for something like that? Well, we always, you gotta be a little crazy, right? I mean, we yeah. all are, otherwise we wouldn't be doing what we do. <laughs> I always say fun. that whenever you think this is a perfect example, because if you think that kicking through one Louisville slugger is crazy, there's <laughs> always someone crazier like chip who's done it with three. So even if you think you're doing something crazy, there's always someone crazier, right? <laughs> yeah, and it's, about, it's about pushing your limits and seeing how far you can go. I know as a, as a guy, and I believe this is fundamental for, for, for all males. It's just a matter of, we have this question of like, do I have what it takes? Mm-hmm. And so as we coach men and young boys and stuff too, is like, we get to answer that question and let them know now that, yeah, you have what it takes until they can believe that enough for themselves. And so that's a way that we kind of push, push against that as well, too. And you've got a lot of young ladies that are in there that want to be part of this adventure, too. So it's like you invite them to come along. And that's a great way to foster that. And we've got tons of girls that do martial arts, like a lot. I would say maybe 50 percent of our kids that try it out for the first time are young girls that do it. My daughter should be up for her first black belt test in about a year, which I'm super proud of. Ooh, she'll she'll be ahead of. Will she be ahead of your curve then? She'll be ahead of you. Yeah, because she'll yeah. be about 12 at the time when she tests. And mm-hmm. um, that was a big, big one for her. She's got a lot of other athletic ability. 
but um, she's worked really hard over the last six years almost to, to earn that. So, yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Very cool. So um, do you so you talked about that you've done like marathons and stuff like that. Do you do that anymore or is that something that you're kind of in between injuries of, like you said? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do a little bit of running here and there right now. My my own main focus right now is I use uh, my martial arts practice so that I get in a couple, two or three times a week for some of the cardio. I teach a kickboxing class uh, once a week for sure, uh, sometimes twice a week, depending. I just taught fit last weekend at Waukee when they did their, just before their opening session mm -hmm. um, for their new 10 weeks. But um, other than that, I'm lifting either at the location or at the gym doing weight training that way. And um you know, my favorite sport to play is actually volleyball. You mentioned like, I'm not one to die for the ball. I don't want no. to, you know, like, I'm all for it. I'm like, yeah. I'm all in like go, going nuts, but it is for the fun of it. And for getting to be hanging out with the people that are, that are there. So, um, yeah, yeah right now, um, my main thing is prepping for my next black belt test. It won't be nearly yeah. as physical, but I want to be in, make sure that I'm in good shape for that. And then we can step up and demonstrate the things we need to do in the classroom. Um, and then figure out how to age well. And look yeah. at this thing and saying, you know, I, I, you can't push the pedal to the metal all the time and just be in the red zone like that is not good for longevity. And then yeah. how do we train the people that we're responsible for and with uh, to do the same thing? So, yeah. Well, awesome. Harrison is pulling out our outro music. So thank you again so much. Good luck with your testing. And we'll be keeping an eye on on that progress on that Louisville slugger. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. I'll see you guys. <laughs> Goodbye. Yeah. Grab a free burger and beer at L.A. Power Sports of Lincoln on April 27th during their Husker Spring Game tailgate. Meet the L.A. Power Sports team, play some tailgate games with them, and enter for a chance to win an official John Elway autographed football. Check out their huge selection of boats and watercraft for the summer, along with hundreds of motorcycles.